LSU football, the Tigers and the Sooners continue to prepare for Saturday's Peach Bowl from Atlanta. Steve Insminger mentioned he believes Clyde Edwards-Alaire could be ready to go on Saturday. Wow. Here's what Insminger said on his press conference Tuesday. I do believe we'll have Clyde. That's my opinion. And LSU trainer Jack Marucci don't confer with me much, but I think Clyde will be there. I have no problems with our backs if Clyde's not there, but I truly expect him to be there. That was... Insminger on Tuesday. Here was Dave Aranda at the same coordinator's press conference talking about the talks he had with UNLV. You know, it, um, I think we had this discussion um, earlier with a couple other guys. I think anytime that you're presented with an opportunity, I think you, um, for, for you and for your family, you want to be able to. Um, to, to look into it, and I think that there's just preliminary talks, and um, it was nothing more than that. I feel like uh, you know that that program has a, is in a great situation. I think the, the AD there and the people associated there are, are going to be on great tracks. I, I wish them well. Over here on the far right. The legend of Joe Burrow extended last night. Just when you thought you couldn't love Burrow anymore, he bails LSU out, hitting 10 of 12 shots in the basketball competition to come back and rally to beat the Sooners. Joey Buckets last night was trending on Twitter as Emily Dixon put out the video of Burrow going ice, uh, just going, he was in fuego. I mean, he was on fire last night, knocking down the 10 of 12, ice in his veins as he... uh, as he gets the win for LSU. Here is Burrow on Tuesday talking about keeping the edge after the award season. It's not hard. It's not hard. I want to win a national title. That's that's always been my drive since I was a sophomore in high school. You know, I, I never dreamed of, you know, when I envisioned myself growing up being a football player, it wasn't in the NFL. It was, it was playing on January 13th in, in a dome somewhere for the national title. LSU in Oklahoma, 3 o'clock from Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta. That'll be a 3 o'clock kickoff Central time. Yeah, you know what it reminds me of? It's like with all great athletes, the ultra competitors, they always have these um, these kind of stories, right? They they, they almost feel like lore, like myths or like legends. I I remember the one about Michael Jordan as a younger where he loses a game of Monopoly to his roommate and then he makes him play all night long, right, until he wins this Basketball competition which means nothing in the grand scheme of things. This is one of those type of stories. Just seems like everything Burrow touches turns to gold right now. Christmas present from Odell Beckham Jr. to the LSU football team as OBJ gifted the Tigers a pair of 720s, his new Nikes, for Christmas as the Tigers are preparing for Oklahoma over in Atlanta. Last night, Christmas Day, NBA basketball, Brandon Ingram had 31 points, including a career high in three-pointers in the New Orleans Pelican surprised Denver 112-100 on Wednesday night to halt the Nuggets' seven-game win streak. The Pelicans, who are 9-23 and in the season, are now 2-0 and versus Denver this year. They spoiled the festive mood at the Pepsi Center as the Nuggets played at home on Christmas Day for the first time in 25 years. Yesterday, all NBA games, they played ah. five NBA games. The home teams were 2-3 and three as ah. the Pelicans closed it out last night. Uh, start up now, Jordy. The Pelicans only five and a half games out of the eighth seed. Playoffs, baby. Here they come. Uh, stay tuned later in the show at the end of the hour. There is an excellent story about the Pelicans from their Portland game a couple nights ago. It's all safe for now. A little note on J.J. Redick. He scored 13 of his 15 in the second quarter, including a buzzer-beating three-pointer near half court. Redick now has 1,799 career three-pointers to move past Clay Thompson for 16th all-time in the NBA list. The next on that list is Kobe Bryant, who finished with 1,827 three-pointers made during his NBA career. The uh, Pelicans begin a two-game homestand Saturday against Indiana. The New Orleans Saints are projected to be the number three seed in the NFC, but they can become the number one seed if they win, and Green Bay loses to Detroit, and the San Francisco 49ers fall to Seattle. The Saints can become the number two seed if they win Sunday and the Packers or the 49ers lose. This prompted head coach Sean Payton to shoot down the notion of benching any players for Week 17's matchup versus Carolina coming up this weekend. New Orleans held a walkthrough on Wednesday instead of a full practice, so they released an estimated injury report, which included Drew Brees on that list, limited with a knee injury. Mike Thomas was limited with a hand injury, and C.J. Gardner-Johnson was limited for a forearm injury. The 
Saints travel to face the Panthers on Sunday for a noon tilt. Yeah, so as far as the Saints seeding goes, uh, as Peyton said, they still have a lot to play for. I, I would say the most realistic, it looks like the two or the three seed. Look, I, I don't see Green Bay losing to Detroit after what they did to the Vikings in Minnesota last week. And that said, Seattle, with money, with Beast Mode, Money Lynch, Marshawn Lynch, back in the league now for this playoff run. Uh, Seattle beating San Francisco for a second time this season. That could happen. And if that does, a Saints win would give him them that coveted first-round buy. So that's who... Uh, I, I feel that that's the most likely scenario. Seahawks, as T-Bob said on Tuesday, announced the return of Marshawn Lynch. They've added Lynch to the roster for the playoff run. They also brought back another ro- former running back in Robert Turbin. Today, college football bowls. Louisiana Tech plays Miami in the Walk-On's Independence Bowl from Shreveport. And <laughs> the Pittsburgh. U. Yeah, that's right, baby. Plays uh, Eastern Michigan in the Quick Lane Bowl up it, in Detroit. Is there a more odd pairing of brands uh, than the U and Shreveport? <laughs> I mean, that's that's uh, quite the juxtaposition there. And then you flip the sideline. You think about Louisiana Tech and the opportunity they have in their home city to go up against a name recognition like or a name Beat brand him. like Miami uh, in a bowl game. What a uh, what a nice boost to the offseason that would be for Skip Holtz and the crew if Bulldogs they can get the win good. today. Yeah, solid, good. dude. Go dogs. All right, those are your headlines. What's trending here on this December 26th edition of Off the Bench. Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge and Etel Business bring you our live coverage of the Tigers in Atlanta for the college football playoff semifinal. Join us Friday at the Atlanta Marriott Marquis from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Central Time and continuing Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Central Time. It's all brought to you by Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge and Etel Business. Ben Mintz coming up 20 minutes from now. We'll talk to Roman Harper in the second hour today. Off the bench, rolling on this Thursday edition.